So this is a CNC router. My good friends from Two Trees asked me some time ago if I'd like to test one out and I really didn't want to do it because I have two CNC milling machines. They don't have the same capacity both directions as this does so this kind of interested me but the reason I said yes is I'm selling my jet mill drill. It's a mill drill that I bought and then I converted it to CNC. I built the electronics for it, put ball screws in it. The other uh, CNC milling machine is a bridge port, weighs 3,500 pounds. I tossed the electronics in it because they were ancient and put servo motors and built new electronics for that. So that'll cut anything I want. And I've cut steel and aluminum, all kinds of things. So once I get rid of the jet, this will fit over there quite well and leave a heck of a lot more space than what I'm having right now. So I've already tested this. I've got some good things to say about it and I've got some not so good things to say about it. Those things I've already addressed with two trees and they were really good about trying to solve the problems. But I'll tell you about those when we're all through. It came with an 80 watt motor and a 500 watt motor. I think I ran this once and then took it off and put this on it. This has its own power supply so that's a good deal and it also has a variable adjustment. The working range on it is 460 by 460 by 80 millimeters and that's uh, 18 and an eighth by 18 and an eighth and 3.14 high. So these things are teaching me how to use metrics. That's scary. And you know it's got these clamps. You're going to see all this stuff. The other cool thing I want to talk about is it has this little uh, Z probe. It'll zero your uh, cutter to where you want your work. That works quite well. So that's, uh, I think that's everything that came with it that you probably need to see. It has a couple collets and, and all these clamps. And the, the touch screen, which I really like that touch screen, except for one of the problems that it's having. And we will talk about that. So I'm going to go ahead and well, I've already cut the parts, so I'm going to add this to the video, and then I'll see you at the end of this, and we'll talk about it. So I'm running this at a pretty fast speed. It's either that, or I need to clip a lot of video out of it, because it would really be long. So I started the machining with a quarter inch flat router bit carbide. I've now switched to a 1 8 ball nose carbide cutter. Once I trusted the machine to do what I asked it to do, I would just start it and go and do something else. I didn't stand over it and watch all this because that would have just been a long time. Same thing here, I started with the quarter inch flat carbide and then we'll switch to the eighth inch round nose carbide and we'll use that Z probe to set it up. So I just clamp a wire to a place that will ground on the tool and there's a button you press and it'll go down and it'll touch that pad which it's getting ready to do. Now it's going real slow. And then it'll lift up and it'll stop at a given amount. That given amount is, I think it's 20.4. That's exactly how far the tool is away from the work. So if I go down to zero, I will just touch the work. That is very handy. So right now I'm proving that it will go down and be right exactly where I want it. It just touched that paper, which is about four thousandths thick, and it's a slight drag coming out. So that is perfect. So now the eighth inch tool is doing its thing, and we will have a completed part here 
shortly, at least while we're watching this, it'll be shortly. The reason it takes quite a while to do the finishing cuts on this is I'm only telling the machine to move 0 0.03 inches in the Y axis. So hopefully most of you have seen the video I did on the manhole cover lid. Well, this is one of those lids being cut on the CNC router. On this part, I put the files on the little SD card and I used the touch screen to do it. The other option, and it's what I did on most everything else, was I put it on my laptop and used a program called Candle. It sends the G code to the machine. I have software called Mach 3. That's what I use on my CNC milling machine. I sure wish I could use it on this because that software is a dream. Many years ago I was one of the testers for Mach 3 and would give them feedback on what maybe they should add and what worked good. So that's kind of the reason that we're not using sound on this portion of it because the camera really picks it up loud and it's not all that loud when you're next to it and when I walk away and go in the house and leave it run I can't hear it at all. So we've switched to the 8th inch ball nose again and in my software for creating the g-code which on this one I used something called Desproto which is really a wonderful software you can choose different ways for the cutter to move I picked a circular motion here it may have been better using a radial movement depending on the part sometimes I'll use Desproto sometimes I use a program that I have called Bobcad both of those programs I had to write my own post processor for it in order to do what the machine needs to know. I'm running this video really close to normal speed and I'm engraving something in there. See if you can guess right now what I'm putting in here and let me know in the comments if you guessed correctly while it was still being machined. So I'm going to go over what I like about it, and pretty much I like all of it. I think it's very heavy. It's quite stout. It's put together quite well. I really like this extra heavy-duty motor that they sent compared to this one. And they also said they would be sending a dust collecting thing and a rotary device that can be used on this. So we'll see if that happens. 
I like all the mechanism here. This is what drives it back and forth in the x-axis. So that's like an Acme screw and there's a nut back there. And uh, so that brings up one issue that I had. When I got this, there was over an eighth inch slop. Hey, well, when you're cutting something with an eighth inch slop in there, your part's not going to look all that good. So I got a hold of them. They sent me a picture saying this is probably what you have to do. So obviously this has been an issue. I had to take this off and go in there and the nut that this rod goes through is fastened to this mechanism. The screws were not tight. They were really loose. Obviously, uh, maybe on an assembly line, uh, you need to tighten them a little bit tighter. Maybe put some Loctite on them. That's what I did. I took it apart and fixed it. No big deal. And the other thing that I had was this area here, the main wires. They come down through here. I think that should have been, there should have been another design on that. Um, so it wasn't cramped in here because this was a quarter inch more that way and it was actually rubbing on that thing. I took it apart without even talking to them and I machined off a quarter of an inch and then when I told them about it they sent a picture of the new guard that's even more opening in here than what I made. So I'm going to take this off again, put it back in my milling machine, cut another quarter inch off. So that needed to be addressed. The other thing is I really like this touch screen. It works great. You put a little SD card in there with your file and I trust it. I did a couple of them that way. Absolutely perfect. But there was another issue in here and it was part of the touch screen. That little Z probe that I showed you. This comes down, touches it and it raises it the same thickness of what that is and it sets that height in the software or on your machine I should say. So when you go down and start cutting, your, your zero is right on the top of the work. That's where I always keep my zero on top of the work. Z zero. If you did it over here, it raised the tool maybe eight millimeters higher than it's supposed to. Uh, and then when you came down to do your work, it was eight millimeters above the work. There's a firmware upgrade coming for that. So when that's fixed, I may not even bring my laptop out here to use it because that works really good. So all in all, I kind of like it a lot and I will be using it for sure. So let's move over uh, where I can show you everything I made and we can wrap this up. Alright, I'll show you what we just did. This is a little cat and I've done this one before on my other machine and given them as gifts and they're very, very popular with our friends. So this is a piece of cherry and I used some light walnut and Danish oil just to give it a little tint there. And then I did a lion. And I think that actually looks pretty nice. Before I get the finish on it, you couldn't see the detail as well. But I think it looks pretty good. Again, it's a piece of cherry with the light walnut Danish oil. This one, I didn't think it would look all that good so I made a second one. But this is a star that I designed in my CAD program and made a solid model out of it and was able to machine it. So because I've got the lighter wood here and the darker there in this piece, and that's how it grew, I uh, wasn't sure it would show up. So I made another one out of maple and that shows up quite well. That was fun to make that and model it up and then machine it. And one more thing, see if you guys could have guessed. This is actually a piece of oak that came from a tree that grew here for a long time. It was near the driveway. The branches kind of hung over where our, uh, we backed the trailer in and now it's a motor home. But we decided to take it down and I ended up finding this scrap in the firewood pile and decided I'd cut it up into little slabs. Well. I just made that. Did anyone guess what was on there? Let me know if you actually guessed correctly. So that's that's about all of it and just make sure that you remember Friday is wood turning videos so 
I will uh, see you then, hopefully. I did have a lot of fun making all these pieces, and I see a good use in my woodworking as well as using them in wood turning. Let me know what you thought about the video. I will add some links and codes in the description if you care to check this out. So, till the next time, see you later.